As the first of class, HMS Glasgow prepares to begin the fitting out phase of construction. In this video we take an overview of the Type 26 frigate design. This is a highly complex warship and it is not possible to cover every aspect of the vessel, but this provides a primer on the overall design, weapons, and sensors. Nearly 40 years on from when the Royal Navy's highly successful Type 23 frigates were conceived, the Type 26 still shares several common concepts with its predecessor. Both are primarily designed for anti-submarine warfare and this requirement dictates the key features of the platform. Their hull form and propulsion system have a low acoustic signature to avoid interfering with passive sonar, which also makes it harder for submarines to detect the ship. The propulsion systems are very different but retain the ability to sprint and drift, with gas turbines engaged to enable high speeds and ultra-quiet diesel electric drive for low speeds and economical cruising. Both have a flight deck and hangar with aircraft handling, refueling, and air weapon handling systems to support the Merlin helicopter, or other future rotary wing assets, used to localize and attack the submarine. The key ASW sensor is the towed array sonar comprising an active body and a passive tail, deployed from a winch housed on the quarterdeck. This is supplemented by an active or passive bow-mounted sonar array housed in a fiberglass dome. The Type 26 propulsion system uses a variation of the combined diesel-electric or gas turbine arrangement. Essentially there are two main operating modes. For higher speeds, a single Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbine drives the propellers directly through gearboxes. For cruising and slower speeds, up to four diesel generators provide power to two electric motors on the shaft line while the gas turbine is declutched. Type 26 benefits from 30 years of advances in propulsion technology in two particular ways. The MT-30 developed from the Trent Aero engine, has such power density that a single unit can propel the 6,900-ton warship up to at least 28 knots. The smaller Type 23 frigates require two spay gas turbines in combination with its motors to reach maximum speed. Modern motors are also much more power-dense than the those available when the Type 23 was designed. The slow-speed motors are placed directly on the shaft line to drive the propellers and are disconnected from the gearboxes by synchro self-shifting clutches. This is an automatic clutch that disconnects when the speed of the main shaft being driven by the motor exceeds that of the input shaft driven by the gas turbines. Decoupling the gearbox further reduces noise in the ultra-quiet running state. The motor speed is controlled by adjusting its frequency through an MV3000 marine converter. The gear train has been developed by David Brown Santaslo, especially for the Type 26 frigate. The company describes it as the quietest ship gear box in the world, and draws on decades of experience and silencing technology used in submarine gearing. The gear train consists of a splitter gear box and two reduction gear boxes built to the highest standards to minimize transmission inaccuracies that are a source of vibration. The largest gears are around 3 meters in diameter but the gear teeth are machined to very fine tolerances measured in microns. The effort devoted to ensuring the gear train is of such high quality indicates that even at higher speeds, when propelled by the gas turbine, the Type 26 will still be a quiet ship, able to rapidly close the range on a submarine without detection. Type 26 can be described as a very large frigate, 149.9 meters in length with a beam of 20.8 meters, officially displacing 6,900 tons, not far short of the Type 45 destroyer which displaces 7,500 tons. The hull has clean lines, with high forward freeboard for good seakeeping and vertical angles avoided to minimize radar returns. Most would agree the overall design is aesthetically pleasing, having the look of a well-balanced warship, although having a high proportion of enclosed superstructure. Active stabilizers are a standard feature of modern combatants, making for a more steady weapons platform and reducing sailor fatigue. Type 26 has a bulky enclosed mainmast built from composite materials to reduce top weight supporting an array of sensors and allowing the primary radar to be sighted about 35 meters above the waterline. Type 26 is the first RN vessel to have a major structural element made from composites, and its manufacture was subcontracted to specialists Umo Mundel AS in Norway, 
with the masts being delivered to the shipyard in Glasgow by barge. The Type 26 has a core crew of 157, but has substantial spare space for another 50 Royal Marines, specialists and augmentees that may be embarked for specific missions. The ship's company will benefit from spacious living accommodation designed from the outset for both male and female crew. The flexible mission bay is a major aspect of the Type 26 design and the first RN warship designed with this feature. Although allocating a spare space sounds simple, ensuring it can be used operationally and in a variety of ways that may not have even been envisioned yet, requires several key enablers. The bay has space for up to 12 20-foot equivalent containers, although in practice this number is unlikely to be carried as there would be no space for movement and access. Typically a mix of a few containers, boats and autonomous systems will be carried. The Mission Bay Handling System developed by Rolls-Royce allows containers, equipment or autonomous systems to be self-loaded alongside and deployed at sea. Mission modules need connections to ship services to supply electrical power, ventilation, and air conditioning. With a wide variety of boats and bulky unmanned systems, each may require bespoke cradle and fixing systems to secure them tightly to the deck when at sea. The MBHS uses a mix of hydraulic and electromechanical actuators to slew, lift, and telescope. It can transverse the width of the bay on a thwartship's rails mounted on the deck head. When launching or recovering boats, a constant tension winch is controlled using an active heave compensation system. It is designed to handle a wide variety of loads including TU containers, up to a maximum weight of 15 tons. The bay is interconnected to the hangar with a fireproof door and has roll-up doors on each side to protect the space from weather and water ingress. The deck head of the bay has to be strengthened to provide longitudinal rigidity to the ship support the MBHS and allow weapons to be mounted on the deck above in future. The 127mm Mark 45 Mod 4 gun and the Mark 41 VLS selected for Type 26 are both very mature systems but they are new to RN service and will have to be integrated with the combat management system and supporting sensors. The 127mm gun benefits from commonality with several NATO navies and the option of advanced or extended-range munition types. It could also deliver the novel Kingfisher depth charge or Sonoboy rounds. The Mark 41 is the most widely used vertical launch system in the world, and offers the RN the option of purchasing a broad variety of missile types. At the time of writing, only the missile delivered by the Anglo-French Future Cruise, an anti-ship weapon program is certain to be carried by Type 26 in its Mark 41 cells. This project, now referred to by the RN as the Future Offensive Surface Weapon, will provide a supersonic or possibly hypersonic, heavyweight land attack and anti-ship missile. Officially, the planning assumption for service entry will be 2028, in line with HMS Glasgow, although there is some skepticism MBDA can deliver such a complex weapon in that time frame. If the RN chose to purchase US missiles, the 24 Mark 41 cells could also be used for a VLA rocket launch torpedo system, the SM-3 ballistic defense missile or SM-6 long-range air defense missiles. This seems like a remote possibility due to the cost of the weapons, their integration with the Type 26 combat system and sensors. Another option would be to quad-pack additional c scepters into the Mark 41. This would allow Type 26 to carry a theoretical maximum combined load of 144 missiles. There is great confidence in the modern Sea Scepter air defense missile that has the range to defend a task group, and also has a modest anti-ship capability. Type 26 has two, well-separated 24-cell Sea Scepter VLS modules, one below the bridge and one abaft the funnel. 48 missiles is an increase on the 32 carried by the Type 23 and reflects the need for the ship to be able to defend itself when operating independently or if providing escort for merchant ships, or the carrier strike group. Type 26 is rounded out with standard self-defense guns in the form of two Phalanx Block 1B close-in weapon systems, two 30mm automated small-caliber guns together with mounts for a standard mix of force protection point 50 cal and general-purpose machine guns. Type 26 has sufficient power generation margins to allow phalanx to be replaced by directed energy weapons, 
when viable operational systems become available in future. Many will argue the high-end Type 26 should have been equipped with a superior flat panel AESA radar, but instead will receive the rotating Artisan system. Precise details of its performance are not public, but Artisan is perhaps underestimated and provides a good balance of capabilities, has a compact antenna, is affordable, is already proven in the RN and has commonality with the Type 23 and the Queen Elizabeth class carriers. Its lightweight has allowed it to be placed high up, extending the radar horizon. BAE systems claim Artisan has a maximum range of about 200 kilometers and can detect small objects traveling at Mach 3 more than 25 kilometers away. It can track up to 800 objects simultaneously and is highly resistant to ECM and interference. Artisan provides initial target data to c -Scepter and can support a salvo, the number is classified, of missiles in flight via the two-way platform data link terminals. Chess has been contracted to supply three Sea Eagle mounts for each ship, the forward mount provides guidance input for the main gun while there is a mount for each 30mm cannon mounted on each side of the hangar. The cameras are also employed more generally for optical surveillance and identification by teams in the operations room or on the bridge. The Type 26 features a spacious operations room, similar to the QEC aircraft carriers. The shared infrastructure system provides a digital backbone throughout the ship. This is accessed using common consoles. An open architecture software running on a high bandwidth network connected to server farms that provide redundancy and backups. Elements can easily be replaced or upgraded and are resilient to damage or partial failure. BAES will provide a version of its newest combat management system, tailored specially for Type 26 which can be rapidly upgraded with downloadable apps or software modules for specific tasks. Users can access the CMS anywhere on the ship using handheld tablets. Modern variants of the RN's existing soft kill decoy systems will be carried, including outfit DLHC NAT fixed decoy launchers and the Ultrasonar 2170 surface ship torpedo defense system. The floating decoy system, outfit DLF 3B currently in RN use, will be replaced by the naval passive offboard decoy. Type 26 will have modern electronic warfare capabilities, delivered as part of the RN's Maritime Electronic Warfare System Integrated Capability Program, Increment 1. Details are limited, but UAT Mod 2.3 radar electronic support measures receivers will be fitted at the top of the mainmast, and the ship will have the Shaman Communications Electronic Support Measures Fit, used to gather signals intelligence. An external communication system will be supplied by Road and Schwartz. The two configurable pole masts will be manufactured by STS Defense. The starboard mast will predominantly be used for UHF and VHF communications, with 4G, GPS and ship-to-shore satellite communications antennas mounted on the port mast.